Greeting, astrophiles. This is Pat Cosgrove for Cosgrove's Cosmos. My observatory project has been moving along at a brisk pace, and today we're going to talk about the framing of the walls, the steel outriggers, and the roof. So, let's get started. With the holes dug and the foundations complete, the next step is to put the posts into the holes. Each of these perma columns is quite heavy, with the three 2x6s and the very heavy concrete base. The only way they can really be moved all around easily is using the bobcat. There are ten of them to place, and the first thing to do is just to set them in the holes, then later they'll be mounted so that they're straight and square and we start to get them fixed into position. Now that all the poles are in the holes, we can now set them correctly. They need to be positioned with string line to make sure they're aligned with the perimeter of the building. Then they need to be set so that they're level and standing up straight. This takes a little bit of finesse and a little bit of bracing to get everything in position. This has to be done for all 10 columns. Yesterday, we didn't have any wood sticking up out of the ground. We had the foundation complete, but today is the first day we started building up. And in one day, all of the perma columns have been set. They're square, they're braced, uh, they're backfilled and very, very solid. Uh, tomorrow, we'll begin to finish up the framing of the walls, and we may even have the welder here to start some work on the metal tube framing that will go around the top of the building and form the basis for the outrigger. You can see here one of the perma column posts, which is now in the ground. The uh, reinforced concrete is five foot long. And basically there's three two by sixes uh, that are glued together and then uh, milled to form the master beam. Now you can see the inside dimensions of the building and get an idea for where the four telescope piers are. Here I'm standing at the north side of the building and you can see the building ahead of me, but you can also see four circular concrete pads, which will be the foundation for the steel outriggers, which will extend from the back of the building. The steel uprights are temporarily mounted for the observatory solely for the purposes of measuring and determining the appropriate length for the lineup of the rest of the building. At this point, the steel is getting ready for installation and it has to be cut into the lengths, both the long lengths for the support members and the shorter pieces for the cross members. After measuring with a laser, the posts are cut to the correct height and then the skirt boards are installed at the base of the building. Now that they've been measured with a laser, the steel uprights for the steel framework can be cut. The 
The steel for the cross braces have been cut to length, but you need to have a 45 degree angle to mount them properly. This is cut with a torch. One of the things that I thought would be really challenging is mounting the 40-foot beams onto the building. These things are very long, quarter-inch steel, very heavy, very massive. But a couple of guys with a bobcat and some good technique made very light work of it. The long beams were carefully put into position, set on top of the posts, uh, secured, and uh, once the first one was done, we quickly did the second. Once the beams were in position, blocks of wood were screwed in on the building side to secure the location, while the welder <coughs> who had joined us was running around tack welding them to the uprights. Then he went back through and did more careful welds to secure the beam in their position. Next, the cross beams, three of them, were cut to the appropriate length. Once cut, the bobcat was again used to lift the beams and carefully put them in position where they were adjusted and welded into place. The next step was to assemble the headers for the roof. This sandwich of wood is actually pretty large and pretty heavy. Rather than assembling them on the ground, since we had this nice, long, strong steel beam, uh, the team decided the best thing to do was to create the headers and assemble them right up on the beams themselves. Single boards were easy to bring up. They were put into position and nailed, and soon we had headers on each side of the building. Once we had the headers assembled, it was a simple thing to put a snap line in and assemble and mount the wheels on the bottom of each header. With their headers laying on their sides on some quickly assembled supports, we asked the welder to tack the track into position. Once we had that, we could bring the header up and around so that the wheels were sitting in the track, in this case the V-wheels and the V-track. We now had to mount this header in position so that it was stable and be a good platform that could be used to assemble the trusses later on. <laughs> Kind of clever. I got the beam screwed onto this board at the end that holds it up independently, so it's in a good position for him to start putting the cross braces on.
The welder created a series of custom brackets, which would be welded to the steel framework when, where they sat upon the post. This allowed the framework to be tied into the uprights of the building. By the end of the second day, we had most of the walls framed in. We had the steel framework pretty much in position with some of the cross members uh, tacked on. And we had the headers for the roof created, the wheels and the track mounted, and things fixed into position for the next day when trusses would be put onto the roof. The next morning, the first thing that was done was to secure the steel onto the post using the custom brackets installed by the welder. The next step was to put the roof trusses on, but before that could happen, we had to make sure that each header was perfectly level, perfectly straight, perfectly parallel, and had the appropriate distance between them. So with some careful adjustments of the supports that were holding the headers in position, we were ready to roll. Despite a somewhat shortened workday because of uh, the rain that moved in, all the trusses were mounted on the roof and braced into position, ready for the next day's work. We've had some great progress this week on the observatory, so stay tuned for future videos as we make more. This is Pat Cosgrove signing off for Cosgrove's Cosmos, wishing you clear skies and excellent seeing.